as a founder, do you strive to make the best use of contradictory information? Watch this video to learn the secret. This video was actually inspired by a uh, uh, Buddhist Catholic or Buddhism Catholicism continuum described in a book called Scaling Up Excellence by Robert I. Sutton and Huggy Rao. One of my favorite books, you've probably heard about it before if you've ever watched any of my episodes. In any case, they talk about this continuum between these two models because this is sort of how these religions have spread themselves throughout the world. And then using that same analogy, using that same idea as to how to spread and scale your business across different environments and maybe even different departments if you're a large company. So if anything about this video inspires you, please share, subscribe, like, and get so you can get more neurocognitive goodness. Thanks. So the secret is it's usually a continuum, not a contradiction, Catholic or Buddhist. The religion has very little to do with it, but they do use these systems. So Buddhism is, in a sense, famous in that any country you go to where Buddhism is present, and I live in Japan, so it's all over the place, has fit into the local culture. You actually see overlap between, um, um, what's the name of it? Uh, Shinto, which is a very ancient religion of Japan, and Buddhism. In fact, I've actually had this open debate in a Buddhist temple with a Japanese friend of mine. Is this a Jinja or, or Shinto temple, or is this a Dera, Tera? Um, a Buddhist shrine. We actually had to walk up to a monk and ask which one. That shows you how much overlap there is in the colors they use, in the architectural design, in many of the, the elements. And of course, everybody knows about um, Tibetan Buddhism um, and of course the Dalai Lama. And so this is one of the things that Buddhism has done to be very successful at spreading itself across different nations, cultures, and for lack of a better word, markets. It might be a cultural market or a religious or spiritual market, but it's a market nonetheless in that sense. And Buddhism tends to adapt to the local conditions and adapt itself to the local customs and even the local previous religions rather than sort of put it over top. Whereas Catholicism traditionally has said, okay, here's Catholicism. We're just going to copy and paste verbatim. We're not going to worry about the local customs so much as we're going to. So this is more of a duplicate clone model, and this is more an adaptive adjust model. So that's how, that's how it comes across. So in the book, um, the authors talk about how some companies were more Catholic and clone or duplicate-like. Copy your model exactly. You can place it in a different state or a different country and just basically take what's already worked in one place and copy it directly across to another place. And Catholicism and many companies have been very successful at doing that. But, but many other companies have been successful at sort of taking the Buddhist model where uh, they're sort of more adaptive to the local markets and conditions. And I can give you an example of a company that's actually done both. That is, in truth, the most successful scaling efforts, the most successful companies have integrated the two extremes into a continuum rather than saying we must do it exactly the same or we must adapt wholly to the environment. And that is, for example, McDonald's. Uh, I saw a McDonald's ad when I was in China for, oh no, sorry, it was Pizza Hut in this case, Eel Pizza. Yes, Eel on a pizza. Uh, here in Japan, you see in McDonald's, though, you do see a lot of adaptions, right? You see like the Samurai Burger, which is popular right now, or um, I'm going to probably get the name wrong. I'll look it up though. Tsukimi, which would be like the, the uh, Spring Moon Festival, I think it is, or the Spring Equinox Festival. And they had a Tsukimi Burger. So 
there's many things, and the interesting thing about McDonald's is there's many things that is exactly the same in every country. Obviously, the, the Golden Arches logo is the same. The breakfast I can get here is the same breakfast you'd get in the States, but they do have local adaptions like local versions and even certain things that you probably can't get anywhere else on earth in McDonald's except in Japan. So they use a model that is adapt both adaptive and duplicate. So it duplicates like Catholicism, but it adapts like Buddhism. And they're somewhere on that scale. And that's sort of what, um, uh, what um, Robert I. Sutton and Huggy Rao found in this book is that many companies find the best balance is to have a balance where you're on a continuum between one extreme and the other. It isn't this or that, but this and that. Okay, so let's see here. Um, yeah, so I've already talked about, <laughs> that's why I paused there. I've already talked about sort of the local adaption. Now, whether you're, scaling, whether you're scaling your business or refining a single element of your business, a department, a new role in your company. I've talked recently more about uh, recruiting and finding good talent. You don't want photocopies of all the same people because diversity inclusion is more than a buzzword. The research supports the idea that you get more innovation and better solutions from not carbon copies in a department, but variety in a department, especially say marketing or your innovation department, your new product development department. You got carbon copies of people, you get carbon copies of ideas, everybody agrees and you get mediocre ideas. So you can take this idea of forming a continuum between duplicating success and adapting success to the situation and slide somewhere along that scale. You might want to start with duplicating at first, but then adapt before actually putting it out there, right? So you scale it, you slide along the continuum until you find the sweet spot for what you think is the case. Without data, you can't know, but that's exactly what the next step is. And the next step is to take it, then test it in the real environment, whether that's the internal customer or the external customer market or culture and then get the feedback. And then from there, you can, it, uh, you can iterate it. So the continuum um, mindset is very useful because it allows you to duplicate and adopt and adapt. So you duplicate your current approach, you adapt and adjust where you think is gonna be optimal. Then you test and you repeat to sort of dial in or optimize your results. Uh, so this process becomes extremely powerful, especially when you're doing, but not only limited to chasing algorithms. I had some people say experts, in fact, famous experts on LinkedIn. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, LinkedIn groups are out. Oh, LinkedIn articles are out. Every day, these things change. And, and the best way to do it is do it yourself, test it yourself, because I found there was no difference between links or no links in articles, links or no links in posts, and posting in groups versus posting right to the feed, my articles, all of them gave me similar results, even though experts said that wouldn't work. So it's important to take the experts, duplicate what they do well, but adjust it to yourself and then test and dial it in. But this can also be applied to any aspect of your business. So uh, if you have any questions, you want me to help you uh, decide whether this kind of a strategy will work for you, reach out to me and we'll see what we can do. That's it for Crush It Club number 112, how to embrace contradiction. My name is Timby Green. Bye for now.